We're going on a field trip. Yay! Normally, I'm confined by the walls of this kitchen, waving my knife around like a crazy person and making some of the wildest creations on YouTube. You know, it's funny, I get a lot of comments on this knife here. And this, this is no ordinary knife. In fact, one might argue knives don't get better than this. It's Damascus, ever heard of it? This one here was hand forged in Japan, and it has a pattern so beautiful that I've often wondered it'll distract the viewers from the actual meal, AKA me. I'm just kidding, we all know Manny's the real meal. These knives can take up to two years to produce because the steel has to be layered over and over over and over and I have no idea what I'm talking about. So for that reason, I'm gonna stop talking because we're headed to a secret location tucked in the wilderness of New Hampshire where a master bladesmith will show us his ways. I don't wanna get anyone too excited, but he also may have made us a special Damascus knife that he says can cook and be thrown. How are you? Hey, Nick, how nice you Nice to meet you, Nick. Back. Nice Zach, to meet nice you. to meet you. Thank you for having us. Thanks for coming up. Come on in, man. All right, this is the shop. Yeah, welcome to the, uh, the studio. This is where the magic happens. This is where it is. I shouldn't have, I knew I was gonna say that. This space, I call it the hot shop. This is kind of where all the nastiest stuff happens. Nastiest. Forging is over there, which is mainly the stuff for the fire. Over here, I've got four different stations for grinding, which is where a lot of the refinement and shaping happens, both to the metal and the wood. Everything in here can kill you, slowly or quickly. What are the odds that Manny would accidentally fall into the welding booth, or something like that? Pretty unlikely, yeah. <laughs> Over here is the machine shop. So this is woodworking and metal machining. Some cool machines in here. This is a World War II era bandsaw for cutting metal. This is a 1968 Bridgeport milling machine. And under that clock there is a big lathe. And the cool thing is that between the milling machine and the lathe, if you have the expertise, which I don't, you can basically build the entire industrial revolution. Oh on, wow. On those two machines. That's crazy. Yeah. That's pretty rad it's there, they're really powerful. Yeah, that's awesome. Today we're gonna learn how to make Damascus knives and we're gonna go all the way from this to this. You ready? Let's do it. Let's do it. So this knife has high contrast Damascus, whereas the one next to it, I've removed the contrast. There's a chemical compound essentially that's producing that contrast. And it's when you've made Damascus, it's two different steels. When you mm -hmm. finish the blade, you then etch it in acid basically. Yeah. And the etching eats away one of the steels more than the other. So there's a topological difference, but in that process, it also deposits a layer of black iron oxide behind. All right, so let's make some Damascus. This is what it starts out as. I get these bars, they're 48 inches long, and then I cut them down into six inch sections. This is two different alloys of steel. Okay. One of them has a little more nickel in it, which is what gives us the contrast at the end when the blade is finished. Okay. And then I shuffle them together, and I weld them into a packet like this, which is called a billet, and you can see. This. And we're gonna heat that up in the forge, which is over there. That we're gonna light, and it's gonna get up to about 2,500 degrees. 2,500 degrees, yeah. Fahrenheit. That's nuts. And we're gonna cook it, and when this thing gets up to a nice, even temperature, glowing bright orange yeah we'll take it out into the power hammer okay and we'll give it a series of blows over the whole thing and that will literally make it fuse it's called forge welding and it will literally weld each of those layers together so that it'll be a solid block of steel with the differing alloys okay that's it wow that is powerful yeah put your arm in your fire <laughs> inside and I wanted to come out for just a second but basically what's happening right now is he's hammering back and forth going into that super hot fire and then hammering 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 and it's finally starting to take the shape of what looks to be a knife we're gonna take this block of steel that we've got layers running through right here's a bar we're now looking at it at the side and we're gonna press ridges into it they're gonna be staggered from one side to the other. little hole that indents yeah like dents on the side of it yeah is that right and what that's gonna end up looking like is okay makes sense this okay. and the layers will be running like this and then we're actually gonna grind off the high spots Oh. So you're left with a flat bar with layers running wavy. Okay, so it would almost be as if you took like this piece right here and you bang this part down, bang this part up, bang this part down, yep. bang this part up, and then just cut off the outside so it was a straight line exactly. again, and then you get that yep. wiggle. Exactly right. Got it. 
And you can actually see, if you look real close, you can see the layers themselves wavering inside of there. You can see some good, uh, like, uh, oh, you can. You can see the little, the wavies. Yeah, you see the wavies there? Yeah, touch it, man. Those right there are the layers. Mm -hmm. So the next step here would be to grind off those ridges, right? Yep. And so you're just going to go back into your little hut back there. Keeps all the sparks from going out, right? Yep. This process takes a while, right? We've been yep. in this really hot room for a while. This is 2,500 degrees. Does anything ever snap, break on you? Like yeah, it's heartbreaking. Uh, if you know what you're doing, you can avoid it. Okay. But if you don't heat treat the steel right, you can end up with steel that's too hard, too brittle, and it'll literally just snap in half. <gasps> no way. Yeah. Can we try? Yeah. So this is a demonstration on what not to do. Yep. Right? <laughs> wow. So now that's about 1,200 degrees. Okay. That's about 600 degrees, maybe less. I'm gonna break steel today. Oh my god, that wasn't even hard. So if the steel is too hard, it takes nothing. I haven't even started the pull. This yeah. is the thing. So first things first, you're going to be shaping this just against this super coarse sandpaper. Yep. Is that it? Yep. And is, is that hard? Is it? Yes and no. So like I've spent hundreds or thousands of hours on the grinder. Yeah. Uh, it's something you really need to develop a feel for. It's hard at first for sure. Uh, but then once you get it, you kind of get it. Okay. So this is the roughest grinder of the blade. This is like the first time. Yep. Okay. Exactly. All right. We took a little bit off on the grinder here and it took kind of a you know a little bit of an uneven shape and made it a little bit more refined. Yeah, literally in seconds you yeah. have turned it into actually what it looks like. This already kind of looks like a knife, yeah. right? This yeah. is crazy. So we, we finished ground the knife and yeah. now we have to uh, etch it to expose the pattern. The the etchant, the acid, will reveal the two steels differently. We have to etch it? Yep. And that means what? Soak it in acid. It's a lot like developing a photograph. How bad is this acid? How dangerous is it? Not very. Okay. Uh, I mean, you wouldn't want to drink it, obviously, but yeah. like I could stick my fingers in it right oh. now and I'd be fine. Okay, I'm not going to do that. No, probably not. We'll switch, take a look. You can start to see it. Oh, it starts to... Wow! Whoa! Manny, don't talk. Manny. Okay. That's insane. I can't believe we got from the starting piece to that, mm -hmm. you know? And now we need a handle. So this one, we're gonna take one of these wood blocks and shape that into our handle for our knife. That's right. right. Yep. Okay, and did you pick one out already? Yeah, yeah, I've got a piece of uh, black curly maple. This is a piece of curly maple which grows locally. This piece has been dyed black. Which is ah, okay, I was gonna ask. I was like, I've never seen a black tree. Yeah, that's why. Okay, perfect. And we're gonna carve this into, <laughs> what are you laughing about? <laughs> so we're gonna turn this into the handle. Yeah, so I'm literally gonna lay it on here. Take this. Ah. So you have to have like a sick beard to be a blacksmith? Yeah, it's in the rules. You gotta have it. Yeah. That does not, no, that doesn't count. Count? Get out. Get out. <laughs> so now we're gonna take this handle right here and you're gonna run between these grinders and you're gonna somehow polish this into a perfect smooth knife handle. Yeah. So after all of our hard work, which took the entire day, right? Mm -hmm. This is what we end up with, and we're not even technically done yet. Right. But we put these two things together and polish it up, and that's what you get. Yeah. Right? So can we see some of the finished products here? Absolutely. I did tell people that maybe there would be some sort of surprise mm. uh, of the knives. I haven't seen them yet. So this is the big reveal. Yeah. Right? This is crazy. All right. Ready? The first one. Wow. Look at that. So this goes, that's insane. That's crazy. So this one right here is the finished product of this one here. If we were to polish it all the way up and dip it more, yep. or what? Etch it, yeah. And etch, it, etch it more and really get those patterns to pop. Yeah. Right? That's what this right here is. Mm -hmm. The big reel for the second knife. Yep. I wanted to give you choices. Oh, wow. This is crazy. There's a Ready? second one. Holy sh! I've never seen a knife like that. Yeah. I really have never seen a knife like that. How did you get it so dark is my first question. So that comes in the etching and the finishing process and uh, the, the contrast is boosted with a finishing etch of super concentrated instant coffee. This is coffee. Yeah. It definitely has coffee in it. It's a coffee what? etch, yeah, the tannic This acid. is a coffee knife. Yeah. This is crazy. And also who the hell would think that you could use coffee to, yeah. to like bring this. So it's essentially you're bringing from exactly. here to here with coffee. Yep. That is the weirdest thing. Yeah. The last thing I feel like we need to do with these knives, however, is the sharpness test, right? Absolutely. Because that, if, it's, if it's not sharp, what is it gonna do? Knives gotta cut. Can, can we see the demonstration here? Absolutely. See, there you, like butter, right? Like butter. That is just so satisfying. I think indeed they passed the test. Mm -hmm. and, and it is crazy how perfectly balanced they are. You can also shave. Oh. 
So I have to say, coming today, I had absolutely no idea what was gonna happen, which is partly why we came, because this is what we wanna show people and, and see. Um, I can't believe that we went from this to this. Yep. I mean, that's insane. Yep. Okay. And hopefully now more people will, will understand how that works. I'm glad that this happened. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, it's fun. This has been absolutely amazing. And I think you now know what's gonna be my go-to knife in the kitchen. Love it. Awesome, thank you so much. Yeah, pleasure. Appreciate it. We are finally back in our kitchen and I brought my knives with me. If I'm being totally honest, I cannot believe we made this knife today. I mean, yes, it took us the entire day, but who would have thought we would leave this kitchen this morning and come back with a knife we made ourselves? In fact, not one, but two knives. We want to take you through all these crazy adventures that we go on, so let us know what you want to check out next. And as always, don't forget to toss a like on the video and subscribe, or else.